Hello, my friends. Uh, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami uh, with another lecture on um, Arab and microwave device design and modeling. Um, today, I'm going to talk about a new series we're going to start, which uh, is basically uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, radial combiners, okay? And what radial combiners are basically um, are cavities or structures that are used to combine um, multiples of RF signals onto a common port or vice versa, to take a, common, to take a signal and split it off to uh, multiports. And um, you might ask why would we go this way and not go to passive splitters and combiners? And there are a lot of reasons to do this, okay? So I will be going through these in the next few uh, presentations. I started out today with the first one, which is to look at the uh, planar um, uh, Radial combiners. Okay, so what I did is I took three um, articles from the IEEE uh, conferences and papers. The first one is a radial cavity power divider based on substrate integrated wave technology. Okay, and the second one is this is a four way, of course. This talks about a four way, which is this, and I'm going to go through the details in a minute. And that basically, um, I took that structure and did a little modification and I made it into an HFSS structure. And this is the, um, the, um, the, the design right now. So I will be talking about the details of this in a moment. But as you can see, this has four coaxial pieces of lines. These are coaxial lines getting attached to this board, okay, on this side. And then on the other side, we have a single port that comes out. So we either go in here and get four out, or we go four in and get one out. And this structure here is really a, a substrate, a, a, a surface integrated waveguide structure. And if you recall, um, I had a whole um, few lectures on SIW um, uh, waveguides and um, filters. And I believe this is the first video that we talked about. This is basically the, this is the structure of the, um, the surface integrated waveguide. And this is how it looks like. So basically it's just a copper on both sides with a bunch of Vs. And of course the, uh, distance between these or the width of this, the effective width of this, uh, plus the distance from the vias uh, from each other decides on the frequency. So you can refer to this presentation here on the structure, but if you happen to be familiar with these already, so let's just get back to this. So now likewise here, I think it's the same author, right? Yeah, it's the same guys. They did exactly the same thing except eight ways now. This is eight ways. And of course, these are low profile, very simple um, structures that you can fabricate. And this is how it looks like once you um, do the, um, the housing, once you enclose the uh, board into the housing. That's the top, this is the bottom. And you can see here the center, which we they call the primary, and these are called the peripherals, okay? So these are called the peripheral ports. And this is a single port. And the, way, the structure is basically based on basically uh, the, the one in the middle here, the one that feeds, um, is based like this. So the probe itself in here, this is what constructs the, um, the signal feeding or the signal coupling out. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the radial combiner itself, it has a symmetry. Okay, so it's, it's in this case, there's eight ways. So each one of those eight sections can be split off 
separate and you can actually model this and analyze it based on that by making a magnetic wall on perfect magnetic wall on each side and, and just treat this separately, the section by section, okay? So uh, of course the four um, way one, the four way uh, radial divider is this one here. And you can see that this is basically how it looks like. You got the, uh, the, the center one and the peripherals, okay? The center probe comes in right here, like I showed you a little bit ago. And then the uh, peripherals are distributed each one at uh, this angle here. And once you fabricate it, this is how it looks like. So uh, it's a pretty uh, simple to do. And so uh, we're gonna look at the, uh, in a minute, we're gonna look at the uh, frequency response of that and analyze it. The third one is not a surface integrated waveguide, but a, uh, Micro strip line one. And what it is, this one is 19 way radial combiner or radial splitter, if you might say. And the way it's constructed, we have a disc, okay? Each one of these is 50 ohm lines. The, the, the yellowish color here is the copper, okay? So, and I'll show that in a minute as well here. Maybe it's easier to show it on. on on here, so let's go here. So basically we have we have 19 ports that are attached to a 50 ohm line on this substrate. The bottom is all ground, okay? And then these are wave ports. These are, these are sheets uh, that are used to inject the wave port, okay? And this is the the inner port, the inner, the central, uh, the, the center port. Okay, so we come in here with a coaxial line in here, and then we end up like this on the sides. And of course, these sides, you can also attach um, coaxial lines, co coaxial connectors, SMA connectors on here, okay? So now, where would you use this? Where would you use this? Uh, this is used in a lot of and uh, faced uh, array antennas where, you can, in this case, or in power amplifiers, okay? In power amplifiers, you bring in the signal, you come in with a signal, you split eight ways, you go into every, um, um, uh, every, every path will go into a separate amplifier, and then you combine the overall with another one of these. So you have back-to-back -back ones. And there's a, actually, there used to be a company that made power amplifiers, uh, I think it was in California, that was um, Spatium which was bought eventually by analog devices. And you can actually uh, see the devices there. They still sell them, okay? And the beauty of this, of course, is because is that you can increase the ports. You can go, for instance, if you decide to go only eight way instead of 19 way here, you still get exactly the same loss, whether you have 19 or eight, because, and, and that's the beauty of this as opposed to, uh, corporate feeding or splitting, uh, where the, the more numbers, the more splits you have, the more losses you have, okay? So let's get back to this article here. So we have a, a, the little disc inside of here, and then these are high impedance lines, okay? And then you have this um, bigger disc, and then you have these. And uh, when you fabricate this, I think there's a picture of a fabricated board. This is that here. This is how it looks like before you assemble the uh, connectors onto these ports, okay? And I have no idea, um, to be honest with you, how um, this uh, usually is, how they ended up with this construction because it's really interesting. So you come in, uh, to a small disc from 50 ohm, and then you split um, eight way uh, with high impedance lines onto this uh, other one. Okay, the reason high impedance lines is because of course you, you this is 19, so it's 19 times the impedance. So once you parallel them, 19, um, um, they are all in parallel with each other and you end up with 50 ohm on that side. So 
Let's get back to the other ones. This one here, so the four way, just to go through the uh, the one that we model. Okay, so. Okay, that's the eight way. Okay, so let's focus on this. So basically, run this, the uh, the dimensions are all parameterized because you would want to actually uh, the um, uh, to optimize it somehow. So of course it's symmetrical. You want to keep the symmetry between these. So if you look on, from top, that's how it looks like from top. Okay, so okay, this is this side, and I have on the other side is this. So now the frequency of response of this is the following. So we're gonna look at this. Here it is. So this is uh, this is usable somewhere from say 12 gigahertz to maybe 13 gigahertz. The middle band is, um, that's 13.8, so 15 gigahertz, okay. So this is actually KU band uh, buck frequencies for SATCOM. This is appropriate to use in that case for uh, using on a power amplifier. Uh, let's look at the E field. It's interesting how this thing is. Uh, so let's animate it and see how this works. Okay, so we got this. So let's look at right on top and uh, Okay, so you can see the signal starting out right in the middle in here, going in here in the middle, and it's distributed equally on all of four uh, ones. And notice that the signal doesn't leak at all outside the uh, the the um, walls. And that's the thing. This is actually a cavity. This is a, like a. It's exactly as it's. It is in fact a. And that's a waveguide cavity. So that you've got this wall, this is all metallic wall that is made from vias, okay? So let's look at sideways. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, so you can see here how the signal is propagating in here, you can split and you're going four ways, of course, okay? So you can demonstrate this actually, to, to do um, combining, all you need to do in that case is basically you uh, need to go to the, uh, the ports, the sources, and just in this case, zero this out, and then make these all ones, okay? And in this case, as you can see now, it is combining. It's uh, all four ports are excited, okay? And the signal goes in and gets combined onto this coaxial line on top. Okay, so this is neat, and uh, you can refer again to this uh, paper if you want to look at the uh, this paper in here. It details the theory, and the dimensions are all in here. I believe I. Uh, I may have modified a few things in here, but uh, the, the dimensions are all there. Okay, let's turn to the eight-way one. Okay, so let's go to the eight. Okay, let's stop this. Okay, here's the eight-way one. And uh, again, this is exactly the same. So we've got the, uh, let's, so you've got the, uh, V is around, you've got the center connected in here, and the other side is ground, okay? And then you've got eight way, eight symmetrical lines connected all around, okay? So if we, uh, if we uh, look at the uh, frequency response on this one, the S parameters, this is basically what we have. This one is down in the C band, okay? So the center frequency of this is 4.5 gigahertz, okay? It's a little bit narrow band, so it's usable for what it is. 
Let's look at the uh, E field on this. And then we got the E field and let's animate it and see how that again, like uh, just like the four way. And the beauty of this is really scalable. So once you design the four way, you can automatically go into HFSS and just duplicate and increase the radius. So you can actually uh, uh, get more uh, ports out. Okay. All right, so this is interesting and neat. And I, in the coming sessions, I will be doing more theory to show the radar combiners and the theoretical work, how it works and so on. So now this one in here is a 20-way combiner, or 19-way, sorry, in the... Uh, Frequency of response of this is, um, okay, there you go. So it might need a little bit tweaking and uh, I did uh, reduce the, uh, the mesh size to, so that I don't complicate it. So, but uh, in any case, so this is what you got, okay? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Dr. Mohammed Nizami again, another lecture on microwave devices. Today we've covered radial combiners, planar radial combiners. Okay. Um, on the uh, In the next sessions, I will be talking about other more complex um, uh, radial combiners. And uh, so we will be looking at some other ones and... Uh, um, we will be looking at waveguide, um, cavity combiners. We'll be looking at ones where we use uh, uh, conical coaxial air, uh, air filled waveguide, coaxial waveguide. That one is interesting, and that's very much like the ones used in the spatium amplifiers, power amplifiers. So until next sessions, um, give me an email uh, or call me at a number down below and uh, share the video if you like. Thank you very much.